Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. So I recently mentioned that I picked up the Mint SLR 670S. This was actually a gift from Mint Camera. Uh, it's a modified SX70 with their time machine component, which basically gives you full manual control of your SX70 shutter speeds. You just set your aperture to F8 and then set your ISO according to whichever film speed you put in. You can use 600 speed film or SX70 film, which has an ISO of 125. You can also use the A100 or A600. So if you wanna use either one of those two film stocks, but still treat this like an aperture priority camera where it's gonna choose the actual shutter speed for you. You can do that, but obviously the main kind of appeal of something like this is being able to have full manual control of your shutter speed. I've used SX70 film, 600 film, I've used Polaroid film in general for a really long time. And actually going through and archiving just all of the instant film I've shot over the years, that's kind of what made me want to start shooting more instant film again, because it's kind of been a while. Archiving everything is taking me a long time, but it's also kind of nice just going through all the film because it's just a big collection of everything from my teenage years and high school to photos at home now with my two kids and my wife. So uh, it's just been interesting to kind of go through everything there and see such a vast uh, just variety of subjects. But all the time that I've been shooting this instant film, I've really just been relying on the auto exposure and using an exposure compensation dial, which isn't even numbered. So uh, I've kind of gotten used to that and I've even made videos on how to get the most out of that exposure compensation dial on the SX-70. But I was really curious uh, when it comes to metering, the best way to meter for this film. Should I meter for the highlights or for the shadows? How much latitude do I really have? So it's basically just been one big experiment kind of learning how to get the most out of this film and I'm still trying to figure it out the most but uh, earlier today Nathan and I went out and shot some photos and I tried a number of different things just to kind of test the film out. I've been so used to using just the exposure compensation dial on the SX-70 cameras for years. Um, I never really know exactly how much latitude this kind of film has. So I'm gonna take two identical photos of this right here where there's uh, some strong highlights as well as some shadows. I'm gonna meter for both and shoot you know, one uh, for the shadows, one for the highlights. That way we can kind of see exactly how precise you need to be when you're metering uh, since you actually have control with this camera. So directly in the sun, we're topping out at one two thousandth of a second, which is as fast as this camera will go. Uh, kind of more in the shadows, we're looking at one one twenty-fifth of a second. Uh, if I do one one twenty-fifth of a second, I think the highlights are going to be way blown out. Uh, but I'm curious, if I do stick to two thousand, how much shadow detail we hold. So. Uh, I don't know, that, that this film just never seems to have as much latitude as like your typical roll film would. So I might do 1,250 as opposed to 2,000 and 1, 125th, just to kind of bring in the range a little bit. So we'll see. So the first one we'll do 1, 250th of a second. And now we'll do 1, 2,000th of a second. I'll try to guess exactly what my framing was. All right. Metering for the highlights, obviously the highlights look great. There's nothing blown out there, but the shadows, you lose a ton of detail. Whereas on the other side, metering for the shadows, the highlights just completely blow out. It looks really soft and kind of hazy. It's just a look I've never really liked. I've always tended to err on the side of underexposure when it comes to Polaroid film specifically. I just think it looks better when it's a little bit under as opposed to a little bit over, but that's totally subjective. It really comes down to your own preference. But in a high contrast scene like that, you can see how much detail you really lose in the shadows. So it all comes down to, you know, what the most important thing is in the frame for you. So first thing I noticed as I was walking up, I wanted to get a photo of this statue here. Uh, on this side, it looks kind of boring because there's so much light all from one direction. But just walking right over here on this side, it's uh, kind of backlit. The sun is coming from that direction. So I not only have a little bit more interesting light, kind of just uh, silhouetting the statue a little bit, but on the opposite side, you have a much darker background for that to kind of contrast against. So 
Uh, just a little reminder to keep kind of like changing things around. Don't just immediately go with your first impression or your first instinct uh, for like a composition or an angle to work from. Uh, this one I think would work a lot better, especially on a format like this where, you know, you're working with uh, sometimes unpredictable color. Uh, so kind of making the most of the light that you can. That's kind of what I have in mind with Polaroids usually. In bright sunny conditions, I've realized at least when I'm shooting 600 speed film, I'm pretty much always gonna be shooting at 1 2,000th of a second, which is the fastest shutter speed this camera offers. Obviously, I could get a slower shutter speed in bright sunlight if I loaded the SX70 film, which again has a speed of 125, but I found that I really like using 600 speed film specifically with this camera. Uh, again, you're working with an F8 lens, so having as much speed as possible, especially if you're in indoors or even just outside in the shade, uh, I was shooting it, you know, one one twenty fifth of a second at f8 in broad daylight. We were just in the shade, so you can see how quickly that shutter speed really drops as you go outside of just direct sun or inside of direct sun. You get, you know what I mean. One thing that they always recommend with Polaroid film is to keep it warm. Uh, their like official recommendation is to kind of take it and just place it under your arm because that's a really warm spot. Uh, typically, if you let the film develop in a little bit colder temperatures, you get more of a bluish greenish kind of tint to it, uh, which is probably the issues I was having last time. I like to just stick things in my back pocket. Uh, Polaroid film, not just things in general. Uh, but I usually put the film in my back pocket to let it develop there, but it's definitely not the same as just putting it actually under your arm and really finding a warm spot. So I'm gonna shoot the same photo twice. Uh, one of them I'm just gonna stick in my back pocket, or actually I'll probably just stick it in my coat pocket. That way it's really not a specifically warm spot. And then the second frame I'll take and put it actually under my arm. That way we can see same shot, same exposure, just two different places of where the film's actually developing. That way you can see how much of a difference it really makes. I've tried to find a composition to work with this particular house and the shadow that's always cast on it a million times, but I can never actually make it work. There's, it's always not the right focal length, not the right format, not the right film, light, there's a million different things. I'm hoping Polaroid, it'll, it'll actually work. So first frame down, it's under my arm developing. Next one, I'm just gonna let it develop in my pocket, my jacket pocket. Uh, nothing really warm in there to you know help keep the temperature stable, so we'll see how much of a difference it makes. All right, see you in six hours. <laughs> So I tested that out and that definitely made a big difference. You can see in the photo that developed just in my open jacket pocket, it definitely has a much bluer, greener kind of tint to it. Whereas the film that was actually developing like close to the body under the arm, it has a much more warmer and kind of magenta color to it, which looks really nice. So definitely keep your film warm if you can. Sometimes, at least here in Ohio in the winter, if I'm out hiking or something and I bring my SX-70, it's kind of hard to keep it really warm, but just keep it as warm as possible. That's definitely gonna get you better results, especially in the shadows where they won't be so blue and green. I also tested this out with Molly in the studio the other day. So I basically just took one single meter reading. I just had a black backdrop and one key light. It wasn't anything crazy. And I wanted to just see how the film handled being really close to the light and in a studio kind of environment, which to my surprise, it worked out really, really well. I'm not used to working with a Polaroid camera in this kind of light because just using the little light meter that's on this camera, it can so easily be tricked in lighting conditions like that. So being able to actually manually uh, meter for everything was just a game changer. I took a meter reading and it gave me one 1 25th of a second at F8, again, for the 600 speed film. I shot a few frames like that and I really like this one where she kind of has her head turned a little bit. The catch light and the eyes just looks amazing but I went ahead and took another exposure at 1 250th of a second, which is only one stop faster, but you can see how much of a difference it makes in the highlights. And my personal preference, I think it looks really good this way. I actually prefer the 1 250th of a second, at least when she's you know facing me and the light is pretty much covering most of her face. I think the one where she kind of has her head turned, the 1 125th of a second works really well, but again, when she's facing towards me, I just think the highlights
lights look so much better. It just looks crispier, if that makes any sense. There's just so much definition there because none of the highlights are blown out at all. Uh, I just really like the way that looks. However, we were, you know, using one light on a black backdrop, so all of the shadows lost pretty much all detail. So it would have been nice to have either a fill or maybe a hair light on that side of the frame. But again, this was just, you know, a five minute test. I'm definitely going to be shooting more in the studio with this combination though. After just putting a couple of packs through this camera, I can tell it's definitely a game changer because the SX-70 is one of my all-time favorite cameras. I've used it in a number of different situations. I've got it tattooed on my arm. Uh, it's just one of the most incredible and iconic cameras ever. Uh, using this, I wasn't sure if I would really like, you know, having this like extra attachment on top of the camera at all times, but uh, you know, I've been used to carrying around the, uh, the SX-70 sonar, which has a much bigger attachment on top. Uh, it really doesn't take up that much more room when it's in the bag, and of course, you can remove it. Um, so far, though, this thing has been great, super accurate in terms of, you know, taking my meter reading and then setting it appropriately on the camera. Even the auto feature as well, just setting it on the auto 600. If I have uh, 600 speed film in here, it handles that great as well. Definitely going to continue to just keep shooting with this camera, keep testing it out. Out. Again, trying to figure out the best way to shoot this film because I've been so used to sticking with just auto exposure and an exposure compensation dial. Having actual manual control is just, it changes everything. So I hope this gave you a little bit more information on the SLR 670S. Again, if there's anything that you want to know more about this camera or metering for this film and actually having manual control, let me know in the comments. I definitely want to continue to make videos about this camera and just showing examples with it. And last but not least, I want to give a big thank you to Squarespace, the sponsor of this video. Squarespace is the best all-in-one platform to build a great looking website. It's super easy to use and really customizable, so no matter what template you use, which there are tons to choose from, you can always dial things in and make it your own. It's obviously a great place to showcase your work, but you can also have things like an email newsletter that you send out to people, which I'm in the process of creating my own. You can also sell products directly through your online store, whether it be digital or physical products. It's super easy to manage, and if you ever have questions, they have 24-7 award-winning customers customer service that are always ready to help. If you want to try Squarespace out for yourself, you can do so entirely free at squarespace.com. But when you're ready to get signed up, go to squarespace.com slash Matt Day, and that'll get you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, also, since we're talking about instant film, I've recently made a new Polaroid account uh, or just instant film account in general over on Instagram. It's at physical moments. Uh, as I've been going through and archiving all of the last 15 years of instant film, I thought it would be fun to just, you know, share some of those photos that I've come across, photos I completely forgot about, um, just random little moments throughout my life of the last 15 years. And uh, I'm having fun just sharing stuff there. So if you're interested in instant film at physical moments, be sure to follow me there. Again, any information on the SLR 670S that you'd like to know, any specific videos or subject matter you'd like me to try out with this camera, leave your recommendations in the comments down below. But that's it for today. Love you guys. I'll see you next time.